Hello, uh, my name is Gopala Vasudevan and today we will talk about chapter 9. So chapter 9 uh, gives you an introduction to the options markets and so on. So what are the different types of options? Uh, the different types of options you have are we have a call option and we have a put option and when you buy a call option you have the right to buy the stock at a certain price and what you see there is that there are two things that take place one is the price and the other is the time okay now a put option gives you the right to sell the asset and again what we have is that it tells you the price at which you can sell the asset it also tells you the time till which it is valid now when you talk about options there are two types of options again we can distinguish one is a European option a European option can be exercised only at the end of its life now we also have American options and American option can be exercised at any time so what is the big difference the big difference is that in the case of an American option you have the ability to exercise early now when is it important or when is it import useful what we find is that a European option or all the stock options in the US they tend to be American options now some of the options on the index they tend to be European options now uh, when is it more important one thing we'll study in later chapters or perhaps in the next chapter is that typically when you buy an option there are two things you get the first is what you get from exercise today and the second is what you get from waiting so these are the time value the time value is what you get from waiting and the intrinsic value is what you get from exercise today so typically what we find is that the price you pay for the option has these two parts and what the people usually say is that unless there is something you can capture so that could be a big dividend or that could be a big coupon payment and so on typically an option is worth more alive than dead and the reason being that when you sell the option you get the time value and the intrinsic value if you exercise it you only get the intrinsic value okay. so what are the things we want to talk about today we want to talk about uh, a long call a long put a short call and a short put so long call is the case where you're buying a call option long put is a case where you're buying a put option a short call is the case where you're buying a call option sorry where you're selling a call option and short put is where you are selling the put option okay so let's look at this case the first one you uh, we, this is referred to as a payoff diagram and what a payoff diagram does is that it tells you the relationship between the st stock price and what you get from exercising the option so typically what we are doing here is that we are have a graph and we want to see what happens at the end and in this case the option price is five dollars the strike price is 100 so typically when you buy a call option you have the right to buy 100 shares of this stock so what that means here is that when you buy this call option you're actually paying five hundred dollars five times 100 and essentially you have the right to buy 100 shares of the stock at $100 per share. Okay? So here what we find here is that at the end if the stock price is less than 100 so if the stock price is less than 100 okay, uh, this is the case what we find is that we will not exercise the call option. Why do we not exercise the call option? So the reason why we not exercise the call option is because uh, if you want to buy the stock perhaps if the stock price is 90 you could go to the market buy it at 90 why do you want to pay hundred dollars let's say the stock price is 99 again you will still want to buy it in the market now what happens to the price you paid five dollars up front so what we are saying here is that the five dollars it is like some money that you spend before so that is in you know in finance or especially in capital budgeting we refer to that as a sunk cost so a sunk cost is gone at this point all that we care is, is that which is cheaper buying the stock in the open market or by exercising the call so what we find here is that uh, when the stock price is 102 we will exercise the call uh, what is our profit so our profit is going to be 102 
minus 100 minus the five dollars so we are going to lose three dollars and when do we break even we break even when the stock price is 105 so at 105 what happens is that the 105 minus the 100 is five dollars minus the five dollars you paid for the call so overall you're going to be breaking even so when we look at this graph essentially what are the main things you see here and you know you just want to remember because chances are you get some short questions in the exam and so on so what we find here is that what is the most you can lose the most you can lose is the call premium and here that is the five dollars what is the most you can make the most you can make is unlimited and what is the break even so the break even here is uh, going to be uh, 105 okay so these are the key points so what we find here is that the maximum loss okay so the maximum loss is the five dollars maximum profit is unlimited uh, break even is 105 okay so these are key things so let's say you get a question like this in the exam you'll be asked to write down these things so what is the maximum you can make that would be unlimited what is the most you can lose that would be the call price and what is the break even the break even is going to be 105 okay now what we have here is that we have the case where uh, we are looking at the case where uh, we, somebody is selling the call option. Now what we see in the case of the uh, options market is we typically refer to that as a zero sum game. So what that means here is that what the buyer makes the seller will lose. So if you look at what happens to the seller what you find is that uh, when the stock price is below 100 the buyer does not exercise and in this case the seller can keep the five dollars and they break even at 105 after that as the stock price goes down they tend to lose a lot of money okay so what do we see here when we talk about the writer for the writer maximum profit is the five dollars break even is 105 and the maximum loss is going to be unlimited okay so what we see here is that in the case of the options market one of the most dangerous things you can do is to sell a call option especially if you do not own this stock now we want to look at what happens to the uh, put option so as we said before when you buy a put option uh, so when we buy a put option what we have said is that you have the right to sell the stock okay and here wh what it tells you is that it tells you what happens to the put buyer and the strike price is seventy dollars and the option price is seven dollars so you have the right to sell the stock and when do you think you're going to exercise that right you will exercise that right when uh, it, it's going to get you more money uh, by exercising the put rather than sell the stock in the open market. So here when the stock price is above 70 what we see is that you will not exercise okay so no exercise and what that means here is that you basically lose what you paid and that is the option price or the option premium of seven dollars. Now when do you break even so in this case the objective is that you will uh, make money as it goes down so the break even is going to be okay, 70 minus 7 that is 63 the maximum loss is seven dollars and what is the ma maximum you can make so the maximum profit is going to be when the stock price hits zero so that would be 70 minus 7 that is 63 dollars so what we find is that in the case of the person who bought the put option they have the right to sell the stock and when do they exercise that right they will exercise that right only when the stock price is below 70 so as an example when the stock price is 69 they will exercise it and what do they get 
they get 70 minus uh, 69. Okay, so 70 is the strike price of the option and 69 is the stock price minus the premium they paid and that is going to be at 69 they will lose six dollars and what we find here is that they break even at 63 that is 70 minus 7 and the most they can make is when the stock price hits zero and that would be 63 dollars so break even is 63, the maximum loss is 7, and the maximum profit is $63. Okay. Now we can see what happened to the person who bought, uh, sold the put option. So that is a short put. So what we find here is that well, the person who sold the put option, uh, what has going to happen is that when the stock price is above 70, the person who bought the put option will not exercise the put, and they tend to keep the put premium here that is seven dollars okay and what is the break even the break even is going to be 63 and what is the most they can lose the most they can lose is going to be 63 dollars so what we are saying here is that uh, what the buyer makes the seller will lose so all said and done typically you know you took corporate finance you took investments and so on we typically talk about stocks bonds and so on so most of the time what we talk about is the buyer and here we are talking about the seller and typically in the case of the options market the person who sells the option he or she is referred to as the writer and what we are saying here is that to figure out what happens to the writer of the person or the option or the person who sold the put it's pretty straightforward all that you got to do is find what happens to the buyer and change the sign now all these are the case where there is no option price or no option premium. So chances are if you get a question in the exam that's going to be where you want to include the call price or the call premium. Okay. Now we want to talk about exchange traded options. So you can find options on common stock, you can find options on com uh, foreign currency, you can find options on different stock indexes such as the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, uh, and so on. You can also find options on the futures contract. So basically when you buy a call option on a futures contract, you have the right to buy a futures contract or to enter into a long position on a futures contract. Now what are the uh, main things you see in the case of exchange traded options? The first one is it talks about the expiration. So basically what we are saying is that uh, when you look at the options market, especially when you talk about options and common stock, the most liquid ones or the ones that you can easily trade tend to be have a maturity less than one year. So that would be the expiration date. You can also buy long term options. The only downside is that it may not be easy to trade those options. Now the second is the strike price. So K stands for the strike price and then we have European options or American options. As we said before, European options you cannot exercise early. American options you can exercise early. And then whether they are call options or put options. Now the next thing we want to talk about is we want to talk about uh, terminology. What is meant by at the money, in the money and out of the money. So the first is that let's look at a call option. And in the case of a call option, So uh, here, uh, let's assume that the stock price is 70. Okay? So all the options that are below 70, those options are said to be in the money. Okay? Now why do we call that in the money? The reason why we call them in the money is because all those options, if somebody wants to exercise them, they're going to make some money out of that. So for example, if it's a 60 strike option, they're going to make 70 minus 60, which is $10. So these are in the money. Those options which have the same strike price as the stock price, those are said to be at the money. And the last one is what happens to those uh, options that have a strike price above the current stock price. So for example, if it is 75, okay, so K equals 75, that option is said to be out of the money. Why do we say that? The reason why we say that is because if you want to exercise those options, you get nothing. So their value is zero. And uh, so these are the three definitions. Add the money means that the stock price is the same as the option price for call options and put options. Now in the money means that the stock price is 
above the current strike price of the option and the last one is when the strike price is above the stock price. So those are out of the money. Now what happens if these are put options? So for puts, If you want to use the same terminology, okay, so for example, the stock price is 70, so those options which have a strike price below 70, those options are set to be, uh, okay, so here the stock price is 70, the strike price is below 70, so for example, 65, that option is set to be out of the money, okay, and those options that have a strike price above this current stock price, these are said to be in the money. Okay, So these are the definitions. I think what you want to be careful about is that the way people talk about uh, call options and the way we think about put options are in some ways exactly the opposite. When you buy a call option, you have the right to buy this stock. So that is why whenever the strike price is below the current stock price, it is said to be in the money. On the other hand, when you talk about a put option, you have the right to sell the stock which means that you basically make money only when the strike price is above the current stock price. Now in chapter 10, we'll spend more time talking about this. Okay? Now when you look at an option, uh, people talk about the option class, Okay, people talk about the option series and then they talk about the intrinsic value and the time value. Okay? So here we want to talk a little bit about uh, intrinsic value and the time value. So let's look at the case where uh, the current stock price is 70. Okay, so we are looking at an option. Uh, the current stock price is 70 and we are looking at two options. One has a strike price of 65 and the other has a strike price of 75. Okay? Now here for the first call, let's say the call price is $7 and for the second one, let's assume that the call price is two dollars. Okay. Now for this one, uh, the first one, okay, what is the intrinsic value? And for the first one, k equals sixty-five. Okay. Uh, the intrinsic value is what you get from exercise today. So that is going to be seventy minus sixty-five, which is five dollars. And uh, what is the time value? So whatever you paid for the option, you paid seven dollars minus the intrinsic value, so that gives you the time value. So what we are saying here is that uh, you paid seven dollars for the call and out of that five dollars is the intrinsic value and two dollars is the time value. So the actual price you pay will have these two parts and that would be the intrinsic value and the time value. Now let's look at the other option with the strike price of 75. Okay, so here, if you have the strike price of 75, okay, so what we are saying here is that what is the intrinsic value? The intrinsic value is zero. Why do we say that? The reason why we say that is because the stock price is only $70, which means that you get nothing from exercise today. Now, what is the time value? The full price you pay for the option, the $2, that is the time value. So the time value here is uh, two dollars okay, and the intrinsic value is zero. So what we are saying here is that the option price has two parts that would be the intrinsic value and the time value. So the first part that would be uh, what you get from exercise today and the second part would be what you get from waiting. Okay. Now what about a put option? So for a put, let's look at the case where, again, the stock price is 70. Okay. The strike price is six, uh, 65. Okay. And let's say the price you paid for the put is $3. Okay. So for this case, we have the right to sell the stock at 65, the current stock price is 70. So what that means is that the intrinsic value is going to be zero 
and the time value is what you're paying for this option and that is the three dollars now let's look at the second case seventy dollars the same stock the strike price is 75 and let's say the put premium is or the put price is seven dollars so in this case the intrinsic value is going to be 75 minus 70 which is five dollars and the rest of the money you paid the two dollars that is going to be the time value okay Okay, now we want to talk about dividends and stock splits. Suppose you own options with a strike price of K to buy or sell N shares. No adjustments are made to the option terms for cash dividends. So when there is an M for M stock split, the stock price is reduced to MK over N and the number of shares is increased. So I think you know this looks a little bit confusing, a little bit difficult to understand. So let's take with a case where uh, you are looking at a stock like Apple and the stock split is going to be 2 is to 1 okay and let's say the stock price was 70 and the strike price of the option was 66 now after the stock split what we typically assume is that the number of shares is going to double the stock price is going to be half so what they will do is that you have the right to buy 200 shares of stock okay and in that case the strike price is going to be $33. So that is going to be the 66 divided by 2, that is 33, and the number of shares you can buy would be double that. Okay. So consider the call option to buy 100 shares for $20 per share. How should the terms be adjusted for a 2 to 1 stock split? So as we said before, the number of shares is going to be 200 and the share price, the strike price is going to be $10 per share. For a 5% split, what that means is that the number of shares you want to buy will increase by 5%, so from 100 to 105. And this uh, price would also be adjusted by the 5%. Okay? Now, in the case of the options, what we find is that most exchanges use market makers to facilitate options trading. And a market maker quotes both bid and ask prices. And the market maker does not know whether the individual requesting the quotes wants to buy or sell. Okay, so basically here, what we are saying is that uh, in all these cases, we have to go to the market maker. And basically, there are two prices that are quoted. Now, what about margins? Now, when you want to buy a call or when you buy a put option, we do not have to post a margin. On the other hand, when you want to write a call or write a put option, we have to post a margin. So what is the rules in the US? So if you're going to write a naked call option, the margin has to be the greater of a total of 100% of the proceeds of sale plus 20% of the underlying share price less the amount by which the option is out of the money and a total of 100% of the proceeds plus 10% of the underlying share price. So basically here, what the exchange is trying to do is that when you write a call option, you are taking significant risk and you might default on the option. So in that case, the exchange wants to protect itself and that's one of the reasons why they ask you to put down some money as a margin. And what are warrants? Now, you know, we talked about call options and when you buy a call option, there's somebody out there who's selling you the call option. So basically, the big thing here is that in the case of the call option, the company has nothing to do with that. So you might be buying a call option on Apple. Apple is not issuing any new shares. On the other hand, when a warrant is being sold, basically the company is issuing those warrants, which basically means that when you exercise those warrants, the company has to issue new shares. And the number of warrants is outstanding is determined by the size of the original issue and changes only when they are exercised or when they expire. So the big difference between a call option and a warrant is that the company has to issue new shares. And what that means is that there is going to be an increase in the number of the shares or there is going to be dilution. So warrants are traded in the same way as stocks and the issuer settles up with the holder when a warrant is exercised. Uh, when call op, uh, warrants are issued by a corporation, exercise will lead to new treasury stock being issued. So that is the big thing here. 
there is going to be an issue of treasury stock. Okay, so because the company is selling those warrants, they have to issue new warrants. Okay? Now, what else is there? So let's say you work at a company like State Street or you work at Microsoft or Oracle or LinkedIn and so on. Typically, what happens is that the company gives you salary. The company might also give you stock and stock options as part of your compensation. So what is an executive stock option? Option issued by a company to executives and when the option is exercised, the company issues more stock. So what we find here is that unlike the regular stock, the company has to issue more stock and usually add the money when exercised. Okay, So these are two things you see. Uh, so the big thing here is that in some ways the executive stock options are similar to the warrants. Now, what are the big differences when you compare with the regular call options? The big differences are in the case of an executive stop option, when you get those options, you might not be able to exercise those options. Typically, there tends to be a waiting period. Now, what about convertible bonds? So, a convertible bonds are regular bonds that can be exchanged for equity at certain times in the future according to a predetermined exchange ratio. Okay? So what does it mean? Basically here what we are saying is that when you exercise, uh, when you buy a convertible bond, essentially what you have is that it's like a hybrid security. And what is a hybrid here? So hybrid means that essentially it, you can think of that as a bond plus you have a call option. Okay, so essentially a, a convertible, you have the right, to, you get typical coupon payments, but if the stock price does well, you have the right to convert into common stocks. Okay, and typically when the company issues the convertible bond, they will tell you what are the ratios and so on. Now, why do companies do this? The reason why companies do that is because sometimes, you know, these are a new company or it could be a company which might not have much cash in hand. So, for example, a biotechnology company. So, for a company like that, they want to issue convertible bonds, but at the same time, they don't want to have a high coupon payment because they either need the money for their research or they may not have the money. So, by giving you a call option, what they are doing is that they are trying to give you a sweetener and the sweetener is that if the stock goes up substantially, you have the right to convert into common stock. Okay? Now, a convertible bond can also be callable and the call provision is a way in which the issuer can force conversion at a time earlier than the holder might otherwise choose. So, basically here what we are saying is that uh, let's say you buy a home uh, some time back, let's say interest rates were 6%, when right now interest rates are low, 3, 3.5, three you can get a 30-year mortgage. So if you have the chance, if you have you know, good credit, you have a good job and so on, if you are able to refinance, chances are you're going to refinance your mortgage. So essentially what you're doing here is that when you took the mortgage, you sold a bond to the bank and right now you're going to buy the bond back and issue a new bond. And this is pretty much the thing that companies also try to do when they have a callable feature. Okay. So what I'd like to say is that you know this is an introduction chapter. This is an introduction chapter. It talks about call options and put options and it talks about how they work and so on. What are some of the main things you want to think about? The first is we talked about the payoff diagrams. You definitely want to make sure you are comfortable with these uh, payoff diagrams. Long call, long put, short call, short put. Uh, the second thing we talked about was we talked about intrinsic value and time value. So the intrinsic value basically tells you what you get from exercise today and the time value basically tells you what you get from waiting. And what we are saying is that when you buy an option, the price you pay has these two parts. It has the intrinsic value and it has the time value. Now, uh, we also talked about option uh, characters such as in the money, at the money, and out of the money. You want to make sure you can uh, think about something like that, you know, for the exam short questions you can get and so on. And uh, I think these are the main things. So at this point, you know, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You definitely want to make sure you are comfortable and, you know, you because otherwise in later chapters when it talked about the binomial model and stuff like that, it gets confusing. So good luck.